Hey, we are live. What is going on? Welcome back to your Lake Fort guy. A little Thursday night live action. Talking the best baits for this weekend. Talking about answering whatever questions you'd like to throw in there. Talk about fishing topic, not fishing topic. Whatever you guys want to talk about. Just follow me, just throw it out there and I'll throw you an answer. And tonight, we're going to reveal a product that we'll be putting up for sale here pretty soon. So I'll be looking forward to showing you guys that. So thank y'all for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Drop us a comment. Let us know who all is here. Go ahead and throw some questions in there if you'd like to as well. <laughs> What's up, Random Skills, Joshua Fogg, Ke Kevin Van Dam is, is apparently watching the live stream. I don't think it's the Kevin Van Dam, but it is a Kevin Van Dam. What's up, JD, Big Mojo, and Asian Joe. Jose Santana, you're very welcome, sir. Appreciate all you guys jumping in. Well, we're getting a house full of them in here tonight. What is the water temp on Lake Fork? Depending on how shallow or deep you are, it's ranging anywhere from 75 to 80, 81, somewhere in there. How is DK? The Dark Knight is just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I have nothing negative to say about the Dark Knight. It is a phenomenal ride. Headed to Palestine in a week. What baits, what good baits are hot right now? Palestine. Uh, I can tell you I'd probably definitely have a frog tied on if I was going to Palestine. Uh, I would for sure have that ready to go. Big perm? Somebody dropping, somebody dropping big perm in the comments. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Well, hey, we're live. Got a bunch of you guys here. Might as well go ahead and knock down Top five baits. Show you guys. Guess it's going to be one of those nights. I will get the baits in. We'll go ahead and knock those out right now. Uh, got some sitting right here. Of course, I got treble hooks getting tied up on each other. Uh, first bait that I'm going to talk to you guys about is one that you should probably go ahead and get used to seeing for quite some time. Now that it's getting that fall time of year, the fish are moving back, starting to chase bait. So I'm throwing the 6 cents moving ADX. You guys will see this a lot over the fall and winter months. I love this crankbait when the water cools down. There it is. Beautiful. What I want to know is who creates the screen name of Kevin Van Dam? Because that's, that's pretty funny, actually. Um, so 6 cents moving ADX is the first entry in the top five tonight. Chatterbait. Green pumpkin chatterbait. With a green pumpkin impact shad, that's the color I'm throwing. White is probably just as good as this. Uh, this is just the one I'm throwing right now. Some of that shallow water got kind of dirtied up and darkened up with all the rain we had last week, so I went to a darker color. What color on the ADX? The ADX that I'm using is wild shad. Uh, bone reactor is another good color. If you can catch bone reactor, they sell a bunch of the bone reactor, so you got to catch it when it's in stock, but bone reactor is a great color. Third bait for the top five is a wacky smash stick. I've switched over from the stick bait, I mean from the trick worm to the smash tech, smash stick, five inch stick worm on the wacky rig. Uh, those are my three shallow baits that I'm having the most success on this week. So hopefully that'll help you guys catch fish this weekend. And then for out deep, man, it's all about slowing down. Those fish are kind of spread out a little bit. They're not really grouped up yet. So you got to go really slow to catch them and nothing better to slow down with than a light Texas rig. An old big, big worm. This is actually a Smash Tech ribbon tail worm. Yes, Smash Tech sells ribbon tail worms, and they are darn good ones. Uh, red Shad has been the best color on that for me, and also the Drop Shot. I'm throwing a green pumpkin trick worm drop shot when I have to, but I don't want to. I didn't even have one tied up to bring in here to y'all, so that'll tell you how much I throw the drop shot. But it makes the top five baits because it is very effective right now. If you're fishing main lake structure a little bit deeper water, Lightweight Texas rig with a big worm and a drop shot are the two best ways to go out there. So hopefully those baits will help y'all catch some more fish this weekend. Y'all like the new hat I got from Six Inch? Check that out. I kind of dig this one. It's nice and clean and simple, black and white, but it matches the, the black and white Your Lake Fork Guy logo because it's just black and white and simple. I love it. 
Do I recommend big swim baits? Oh yeah, I recommend big swim baits. Uh huh. Eight to ten inches is fine. I throw a seven inch Smash Tech Convict a lot in the grass. Nothing wrong with throwing an eight to ten incher. I'm um, actually I got one right here that I just got this in a box yesterday. The new version of the Six Sense Flow Guider One Thirty. Can't wait to throw this thing this fall. It's almost time. I got another couple weeks maybe till I'll be firing this thing around on a regular basis. Love it, love it, love it. Old Timmy Rhodes in the hizzy. My old tournament partner, my old PIC, Timmy Rhodes, is here. What is up? All right, so y'all want to see a new product? Got a new product, got a new product, got a new product. It's not anything real big or fancy. It's not going to make you catch, like, tons of fish. But I'm a big fan of it because I'm going to use it every day. We're going to have your Lake Fort Guide Ramblers, I guess they're called. But look here. Here's the best part. Are you ready? What about that, y'all? Talking about hashtag goat lake. <laughs> hashtag goat lake on the other side from the Year Lake Fort Guide logo. We're working on getting these in production and getting them made so that you guys can buy those as well. We'll put those up on the website. We're not going to try to make a ton of profit on them. We just want to get that out there and let you guys partake in the goat lake rambler, as you might see. You might, might just have to call it the goat rambler. I don't know. But uh, we will be putting those up on the website here, hopefully, within the next few weeks. So, one other thing I do want to plug, shameless plug here, I ordered a bunch of these hoodies last winter, a bunch, and we sold a bunch, but we still have some left in inventory. So, if you would like one of these Your Lake Fort Guide hoodies now that it's getting cold again, be sure and go to the yourlakefortguide.com website, click the Shop My Gear tab, and order them up. What kind of top water am I throwing these days? A uh, frog. I'm trying to feed them a frog. They're not wanting to bite it as good as I want them to. But they are starting to, it's that time. They should be biting a frog. And they are biting a little bit, and it's going to keep getting better. But definitely a frog. Lake came up. Lake came up about three quarters of a foot. So we're about a foot and three quarters low right now is what we are. But it did come up some. It might still be rising, too, with runoff. I don't know. I don't know if it's settled in yet or not. Goat Lake? Goat Lake? Question mark? What Are you questioning if Lake Fork is the Goat Lake? Because I don't think there's any question. It is the Goat Lake. There's no doubt. Do I throw the Six Sense Dogma? Yeah. Yeah, buddy, I throw the Six Sense Dogma. Uh, I like the Splashback Popper and the Dogma, both from Six Sense. Uh, I would probably lean more towards the Splashback Popper right now. I like... You know, I don't know. It just depends on what the fish are doing. Like, if I can visibly see them chasing bait to the surface and blowing up on it, uh, and I don't have to worry about matted grass, then I throw the dogma. Because I like the walking style baits when they're moving and chasing a lot. Uh, when I'm just trying to get that top water bite in the morning or just even throughout the day sometimes in the fall like we do, I prefer the popper style bait of the splashback popper uh, where I can pause it a little better. Pickwick is the Goat Lake? No, bro. Pickwick ain't close to the Goat Lake. No. No. Pickwick ain't never put out 115 pounds in three days in a tournament. Sorry, but it hasn't. Not even close. Are the fish to the creek? Well, here's the thing about Fork. There's always fish in the creeks. There's always fish shallow, and there's always fish deep on Lake Fork. It just has such an abundant population. Um... There are new fish coming to the creek, which is what you're really asking is, are, are the new fish, the migratory fish, are they there? The very first edge of them are getting, or have gotten there the last couple days, and there's more coming. There's a ton of bait moving in back there. Mention the water plopper 130 in your vids. Why 130 or 110? Well, when I first started fishing the water plopper, they had a 130, a 90, and a 190. They didn't have a 110. The 110 is probably great, but I like the 130 because it's a bigger bait, and I don't like to fish for small fish. <laughs> so that's what we do. Uh, goat, yeah, goat means greatest. So somebody was asking what goat means. Goat means greatest of all time. That's what goat means. Alrighty. 
Next weekend's, if I had to choose one, oh my goodness, every time I try to read a comment. I love you guys for dropping the comments. Next week, if you had to choose one, would you rather fish a shallow creek arm or brush piles on a main point? I would be, I'm, I'm out on brush piles, man. Them fish get on them open flat spots in the fall. And so I'm out on brush piles as far as what I would be fishing offshore. Now, I'm not saying, you can always catch fish in brush piles. But I would not be targeting that specifically. I'd be looking for big schools of fish because they're going to start getting in big schools here pretty soon. So I'll be looking for the big schools on the big flat spots like road beds, long flat topped skinny points, pond dams, stuff like that is what I'd be targeting for main lake structure fishing. If I had to choose between one next week, I would choose the shallow creek arm look for grass. How can you schedule a guide trip with me? Well, you can call me, you can text me, you can email me, you can hit me up on Facebook. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways. But the easiest way is just to send me a text message. How to fish high muddy water. Um, high muddy water. If it's real muddy, it can be uh, kind of tough. Let's see. Muddy water. I mean, a black and blue flea, you got to have something black and blue to flip. Whether it's a creature bait or a jig, I don't care. Which one what you want to do. Uh, also, I like that movement ADX because it bounces off cover so well in shallow water, man. You can deflect that thing off bushes and trees and just all kinds of stuff. And it's got such a hard vibrating action that they can, it helps them find it. I would like a chartreuse black back movement ADX in muddy water. And then I want something black and blue to flip. And I want a spinner bait with a really big hard thumping blade, like a big Colorado blade, Indiana blade, something like that. And I would not be afraid to throw that in black or a chartreuse color as well. Chip has been updated for the Berkeley. If you order the tournament chip, you will get the Berkeley version as of this weekend. So, yeah, you're good to go on ordering Berkeley chip. What did I think of the Sealy tournament last weekend? I didn't get to go there. I had some off-the-water meetings I had to attend out of town, but I had uh, I saw the results. I mean, it, it's Lake Fork. It still took a le – ha Lake Fork's been fishing tough, guys. We've been going through a tough time of year with turnover stuff going on and all that stuff. Um, it's not been easy. None of the guides are whacking them. It's not easy fishing on Lake Fork right now by any means. She's not fishing at her best, and it still took an 11-pounder to win. I mean, that's one of the reasons it's the Goat Lake. Uh, lead strips for the convict. So somebody's asking, what are those? I, I recommended those in the video. So the, the Storm actually makes lead strips where you can add them to the bottom of jerk baits to suspend them or whatever and so you can just peel these lead strips off and wrap them around the bottom of your hook and it'll help kill that bait amistad is clear water rocky decent steep ledges cold front obviously any tip for fall fishing uh yeah so if it's post frontal like right now post front's not going to affect them because the water hasn't even cooled off but once you get to post front when it is cold in the fall they're going to bury up in that grass, or you're going to have to drop shot them out deep. That would be my suggestion. I would throw a jerk bait on the edge of grass. I would throw, uh, you know, weightless baits around grass just to kind of soak it in front of them. And then if I was fishing, you know, structure with no grass on the side, the Amistad that I know and love from back in the day was full of grass. I don't know if it has grass anymore or not. But if you're not fishing grass, then you're going to have to fish some type of offshore structure, and I would suggest having the drop shot ready to go in tough post-frontal conditions. <laughs> On Pickwick, you can catch... So, okay, a guy who puts his screen name is Kevin Van Dam. So, uh, yeah, we'll just leave that comment. On, he, this Kevin Van Dam says, on pick week, you can catch a 12-pound largemouth and an 8-pound smallmouth in the same day. Can, okay, fine. You can catch an 18-pound largemouth on Lake Fork. Have y'all ever done that at pick week? Have you ever caught 115 pounds in three days? Have you entered over half of the state's Teenage class fish into the Sherry Lunker program from one lake compared to the whole entire state. But unless you know the stats on Lake Fork, I promise you're going to lose that argument. You cannot argue with Lake Fork. 
How do I like the new rig? Is it a fish catching machine or what? Yes, yeah, she is learning how to sniff them out very quickly. She is a phenomenal boat. KVD is a troll. I kind of figured when I saw his name was Kevin Van Dam, right? So I'm sure it's probably a buddy of one of uh, my fellow brethren guides on Lake Fork, I'm sure. So, Do you fish the fluke on scroungers at all? Man, you know what? That's something I'm... That is a flaw. That's on me. That is a great bait and one that works really good on Lake Fork and all lakes, really. But I've never really thrown the scrounger head with a fluke deal. And I should. I, I've, I've messed with it a little bit. I've never got into it. But that is a great bait. I, I, unfortunately, I have no information because I just have not really done it. Water clarity. for You know, water, water clarity is pretty good considering all the weather we had within the last week. Um... It held up pretty well. It's already clearing up again. Uh, it did get a little dirty, especially in the back. Some of those creeks that got muddy. The creeks that get a lot of flow, you know, the big creeks, um, got, got pretty dirty. But it's already starting to clear up, and it's certainly not unfishable. Like, it's not terrible clarity. It's fine. You can go throw a swim bait if you want to or whatever. Like, it's not something where I got to throw a big, hard, thumping bait for them to see it. So, Blake Horton, we're glad you made it, buddy. Biggest largemouth on Pickwick was 15.7. That's cute. That is a new six cents hat right there. Check it out. The old black and white matches the old black and white Your Lake Fort Guy logo. I'm digging it. My boy Hayden down there at six cents just threw this in a box for me with some other stuff the other day that I'd asked for and sent it to me. So a little bonus hat for you, boy. And I'm loving it. That's like a McDonald's commercial right there. Hashtag I'm loving it. Drop it in the comments. Have I ever tried a pink fluke? No, I've never fished a pink fluke any time of year. Sorry. <laughs> I sure haven't. Never occurred to me to try. Well, David, have you ever parted in with a 7-iron? <laughs> Why 10 cup? It never occurred to me to try. <laughs> That's probably my favorite movie of all time. I love that movie. First timer at Fork. West side or east side of the lake? I have the map shit, but which side would be better for a PB? Mm, east side. I, I don't know. I mean, neither side's better for a PB. Uh, they, they both have giant fish on both sides. Um, east side seems to be a little further along in the fall deal, so I'd go to the east side. Can lily pads be fished this time of year? And if so, where can you find them? Yeah, I mean, lily pads, there's several spots that have lily pads. Uh, just kind of, uh, you know, up the upper ends have some lily pad patches you can fish. And there's some scattered ones in some isolated patches in other places. Um, I mean, just go to the end of the road on both arms and you'll see lily pads. And yeah, they, they, do, they are holding some fish right now. Have I ever fished the impact jig? I have fished the impact jig. It is very, very weedless. Not my favorite head design on the flipping jig, um, but it is the weed guard functions exactly as advertised. It's phenomenal. Do I have any fat boy sweaters left? I believe I have some 3X and 2X left. No 4X. Um, but the, main, the best way to find out what size I have left, you just go to my website. It'll tell you, like, if the size is on there, it's available. If it runs out, we take it off the website. Target water temp to look for when you can bet they're starting their fall patterns and moving in schools up in Creek Arms up here in northwest Arkansas. I don't necessarily have a target water temp. I mean, I like to get it in the 70s. You know, I like to get it down at least in the lower 80s. But really all I need, I just need it low enough for the lake to turn over. Because once the lake turns over, after that, they're going to start moving in that direction. And then the colder, every cold front is going to push them further until it gets, you know, that water gets down into the upper 60, 70 range, right at 70 degree range, and then they're all kind of going to be back there doing their thing until the water gets out of the 60s. Favorite spot to fish on Lake Fork? In the water. Uh, number on my website? Yeah, you can text. It's also at the end of all the videos. The number that you can text is 903-519-1542, but don't text it right now until we're done with the live stream because it'll kick me off. Top water time, it is top water time. 
ever fish lightweight hair jigs in the fall or winter? Uh, no, I've used them in the summer. I've never fished them in the fall or winter. Uh, we throw a lot of spoons in the fall and winter. And then once we get to winter, I got that jig in my hand, and I got a hard time letting go. I'm addicted to jig fishing. Been on school and fish, now the water is up two feet. Should I look on the base? So that's probably going to scatter some of those fish for a very short period of time. Soon they will gather back up. They will gather back soon because it's that time of year when they want to hunt in packs. But initially when that water jumps up, it's going to push them a little bit shallower, a little bit further back, and it should scatter them up. That's what should happen. So I would, yes, look to the shallow cover, fish that until you visibly see the schooling activity start going on again and then get back on your pattern. Any chance of seeing some map study coming up? Ben, I did see your request. I just haven't had a chance to return a reply to the comment. It showed up in my notifications on my phone, though I saw it. Um, yeah, we can do another map study, no problem. Sure, we will definitely do that. It'll be a good time of year to do it talking about fall. So, Favorite color of jigs for this time of year? So the guys that follow me, you guys have seen a lot of stuff, you know that I fish basically, for the most part, two colors of jigs. When we're talking about flipping jigs and football jigs. I fish a green and brown jig, and I fish a black and blue jig. And that's basically the pretty much what I throw. I may vary it a little bit here and there, but that's basically what I throw. I stick to green and brown, unless the water's really dirty. This time of year, I'll stick to green and brown until around Thanksgiving. Once I get to December, I pretty much got that black and blue in my hand all the way till spring. <laughs> See, I'm telling y'all, Tim Rhodes is definitely my old tournament partner. They asked me what color jig, and Tim's already commented, greens and browns. That's it. That's all, that's all I throw. <laughs> what water temp to switch to a black and blue jig when I get out of the 60s? When I get down into like the 59, 58s, that's kind of probably the closest water temp. I might do it in the lower 60s if it was, you know, December. Sometimes we'll have water in the 60s through December, and I'll still go to black and blue just because it's just habit. But if I was thinking about it on a water temp basis, I would probably say the 60-degree mark is my changeover. So just watch your video with your buddy who kept you laughing the whole time. That could probably literally be about 30% of the videos I've ever made. I've got good friends, man. That's all I can say about that. i got good friends. Well, I have friends that are good for entertainment. They keep me entertained because they're just, yeah, they're not all there, which is what I like. Those are my people because I'm probably not all here either. What rod specs and line do you throw on the Movement 80X? Movement 80X. Movement 80X. I have two rods that I like to throw it on. Depends on how heavy the grass is that I'm fishing. Line is always 20 pound fluorocarbon for me, but I throw it on the 7.5 heavy with a moderate tip, which is important for that crankbait when I'm not fishing heavy grass. When I'm fishing heavy grass, I actually like to throw it on the 7.2 extra heavy Stiff rod for a crankbait, you got to be easy with them, and you really got to play them when you're fighting them. But when I throw it on that 72 extra heavy, it pops out of grass so good that I like to throw it on that when I'm fishing heavy grass. Do I have a weight preference or a go to on a jig? I'm guessing you're asking because we've been talking about a jig a lot. Uh, on a jig, I prefer probably a half ounce is the one I throw mo like the most is a half ounce. I throw if I'm if I'm fishing, I'll say this. So if I'm fishing eight foot or less, I'm gonna throw a three eighths ounce jig. If I'm fishing eight foot or deeper with a flipping jig, it's almost always a half ounce. Every once in a while, I'll go to three quarter ounce if it's real windy. When I'm fishing offshore you know, big main leg structure where I want that jig glued to the bottom a little more, then I fish a three quarter or one ounce. Usually a three quarter ounce most of the time. Am I using weight on my wacky rig? With the stick bait I use no weight with the wacky rig. <laughs> There's a wad of them down there. Oh Heath Taylor. It's old Heath Taylor quote in the house tonight. That's beautiful. How's Richland Chambers? I've never fished Richland Chambers. I have no idea.
Bass is coming to Gunnersville in June. Dreading that, do big derbies mess for up? No, not at all. We've had, I fished the day after the Sealy tournament. It was fine. Like, it's not a problem. Both fish handle it better than you think they do. The boat traffic bothers them more than anything than the fishing pressure does. And, it, you know, when it makes all that noise, it can make it tough when there's a lot of boat traffic on the lake. But then, like, the day after the tournament, all the boat traffic's gone, and the fish are, like, back to normal. So I haven't really noticed it being a big deal. Favorite flute, bait, brand, and color? Uh, I'm throwing the Impact Shad. Impact Shad has completely replaced. I used to throw the Zoom flutes. Impact Shad has completely replaced all other fluke style baits for me. And favorite go-to all-around color is probably watermelon red, but I, I like the Houdini color a lot because it mixes the green and the pearl. You know, I, I like that a lot. But I probably throw the watermelon red more than anything else. New to the live cast. Hey, thanks for joining us, Jody. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Top three favorite baits on a Carolina rig, Cody Stanley. Great question. The Impact Shad is one of my Favorite Carolina rig baits, actually. I do like to throw the Impact Shell Carolina rig. Uh, the Bubble Fry and a Baby Brush Hog. That's an easy question. Those three are the only three that I probably throw on a Carolina rig. Baby Brush Hog, uh, Smash Tech Bubble Fry, and Impact Shad. My Lorance went down on me. Do I stay with Lorance or go to Hummingbird? I... I'm a Lawrence guy. I mean, Hummingbird's got some interesting stuff going on with their mega imaging and some of their stuff they're doing. I'm a Lawrence guy. I specifically, you know, Skeeters are coming stock with Hummingbird now, and I specifically let my boat dealer know that I need Lawrence units on my graph. I, I'm a Lawrence has always, always, always identified. It. It's made it easier to see and identify and mark fish and different species of fish and be able to tell them apart, like. The, the fish marking on Lorance sonar specifically is so much better than Hummingbird that I've all, like, I just trust what I see on Lorance. But I've spent a long time looking at Lorance sonar, so I'm very comfortable with it. So I'm not saying Hummingbird's worse than Lorance, but for me, I'm sticking with Lorance. Lorance is 100% easier to use and 100% just it's, it, the functionality of it's better. What do I use at Toledo Bend? Man, all the time I've been to Toledo Bend over the last 10 years is in the springtime, and we've been sight fishing and throwing, you know, wacky worm weightless plastics like you do in the spring, and, and there is a little bit of a big swim bait bite that happens in the springtime at Toledo Bend. As far as this time of year, I have no idea. I would think you could translate everything I say about Fort and take it right to Toledo Bend and do the same thing uh, as far as what we're using for baits are really, really close to it. <laughs> my, oh, oh, PIC Timmy Rose chiming in. He says, my uh, bait of choice down at Toledo Bend is the brown water, which is true, because when I go to Toledo Bend, I'm on a buddy's trip, and I do drink a little bit of that brown water when I go down there. That's that's very true. Uh, flapping trailer or chunk on jig? So for me, I actually use a flapping trailer until the water gets in the lower 50s, like when it's 53, 52, 51, or colder in the 40s, then I go to a chunk, actually, I'm sorry, when the water gets into the 40s, that's when I go to a chunk trailer. If it's a 50 degree or higher water temp, I use the Smash Tech Smash Crawl, is my, my jig trailer of choice. Favorite locate bait next month? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a really hard one for me. It's, it's, it's either a lipless crankbait or the Movement ADX. One of those two. I like both of them. You throw A-Rigs in the fall or winter. Yeah. Yeah, 100% throw an A-Rig. Uh, on throwing an A-Rig, uh, what's my advice? My advice, it's, it's not complicated. You just got to throw it out there and reel it in. Uh, my advice is fish it slower. Like I, most things that I see with people, that they they want to wind that a rig too fast, and with all those arms, man, it'll it'll ride up unless you put a lot of weight on it. And I don't like to put a lot of weight on it. It makes it hard to throw, and I just don't like to put a lot of weight on it. it doesn't fall natural. Uh, 
slow roll up thing. If you're throwing the blade at a rig, they got those little bitty blades. It doesn't take any water pressure at all, hardly to turn them. And those little swim baits, their tails kick with very little water pressure, so go a lot slower than you think you need to go with that a rig. I mean, you could almost just hop it off the bottom and it would still be kicking. So uh, slow down is my number one clue with the a rig for you. Where do I get most of my fishing supplies? I get most of them from my sponsors when they send them to me. <laughs> What size heads on an A-Rig? Mm, killing me. Because I don't want to lie to you guys, but there's some stuff that goes on with the A-Rig that I was told somebody I wouldn't tell when they showed me years ago. I don't use jig heads. I use bags. And I use the lightest ones I can get away with. So it stays weedless and I can throw it in trees where nobody else throws it. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Second week in November open. I do have some, I have scattered openings throughout November. I don't have any whole weeks open, but I do have scattered openings. Right as I'm saying, yeah. So, okay. The A rig deal, I don't want a lot of you guys, so I'm going to tell you, but this is going to get me in a lot of trouble, so I hope y'all appreciate it. I do not throw jig heads on Alabama rigs, I throw belly weighted weedless hooks. And I throw the lightest ones I can get away with for the size swim bait that I want to use. Usually small, usually like three aught belly weighted hooks. I do that so it stays weedless and we can throw it in the trees where people don't usually throw them. And I'm going to get disowned over that one. But it's like five years ago when he told me, so hopefully he didn't get too mad. <clears throat> there it is. Haven't been tossing big permanent. No, you know, for me, those really big straight tail worms are, I use those in the summertime a lot. You know, the next time that I use, I, yeah, I know. That's one of the reasons I shared it. It's not, that A-Rig deal is not the most top secret deal anymore. If it was still just a handful of people doing it, then I wouldn't have said anything because just out of respect for that person, you know, not not because I don't want to share, but uh, Kevin Van Dam, hashtag ask your mom to that question right there. Uh <laughs> hey, I don't mind sharing a big perm. Big perm is a great bait. I do. The big straight tail worms are primarily a summertime deal for me. Uh, the next time that I will really look into using the big giant straight tail worms for me personally, I'm not saying you can't go catch them on big perm because it is a great bait, great action, all that. Um, but I'm I'm excited actually to put a nail weight in the head and use it like an upsized trick worm to wacky rig in the springtime. I think we're going to crush it on that next year. So we'll see. What type of structure do I fish in the fall? I went over this earlier, so I'll go over it real quick one more time. Long, narrow, flat spots offshore in 15 to 20 feet are what I key on. Road beds, long skinny points with flat tops, pond dams, stuff like that are kind of the things that I really key on. I'm going to do a map study on this, and we're going to talk about this pretty soon. Kevin Jones, you made it. Better late than never. What do I think of the MLF League next year? I think it's great. Man, I think it's great. You know, MLF, as it's has become the number one, uh, the number one, uh, you know, TV show, fishing TV show out there, and I think we're losing signal. Are we back? We're back. So sorry about that, guys. It started rough, and it's just finishing worse as far as the signal goes tonight. Can I do meet and greets? I do meet and greets every other Friday. I have a standing meet and greet at Lake Fork Marina. We do free seminars. We talk about fishing. And I'm always there early, and I always stay late to talk to everybody. So there's a meet and greet that goes on with me every other Friday. I just don't call it a meet and greet. It's a free seminar. So The KVD troll guy is texting me constantly, interrupting the signal. No, he's not. But that'd be funny if he was. But uh, <laughs> anyways... So seminars are an awesome meet and greet opportunity. Love to meet any of you guys that would like to come join us up there at Lake Fort Marina. We're doing one tomorrow night. Come check it out. Uh, the Major League Fishing Tour, I think it's great. I think it's great for the industry. I think it's great for tournament anglers. It has me paying attention because the tournament angling profession gets to a point where it's actually profitable for the majority of the guys. I might guide a little less. We'll just say that. 
<laughs> yes, I did. Dude, we must we must be affected. We must be getting there. We must be growing and getting there because we have full time trolls now, and I love it. I KVD, I'm not mad at you one bit, buddy. I'm loving what you're doing tonight in the comments. It's awesome. Do I like Lake of the Pines? I love Lake of the Pines. Before we get interrupted, though, we have been on for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much. Be on the lookout for these. The old Goat Lake Cups. The Goat Lake, you're like Fort Guide Ramblers, coming to a place near, website near you, I guess. Yeah, we'll be putting those up soon so you guys can get your hands on those. If you'd like a hoodie, check out the website, order those up. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. And hope to see you all tomorrow night at the seminar, Lake Fort Marina, 6 p.m. And we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.